All right, how's it going guys? EA40 here, and I've decided to sort of film in a different uh, different location and stuff today. But anyway, today what I'm gonna talk about is uh, the season premiere of the third version of Top Gear. So, as you guys know, um, the first episode has just aired recently. Um, I'm recording this on a Tuesday, and and on Sunday it played in the UK, but sadly those of us here on the wrong side of the pond had to wait until yesterday evening to watch uh, Top Gear and Extra Gear. So what do I have to say about it? Like, what would my rating be? I would rate this one <laughs> a four and a half out of ten. That's my rating. So the way it would work, if it were to have started at ten out of ten, two and a half stars goes away due to Chris Evans um, two and a half and I'll explain it more two and a half goes away due to like forced audience reactions and then a half goes away due to um, identity crisis and other different things so let me let me break that down a little more so with with the with Chris Evans People were saying, like, he wouldn't do well due to, like, an ego and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know so much about that. But I think he was trying too hard to, like, be funny and get people active and stuff like that. And it just didn't turn out that well. It, it just seemed too forced. Um, he was yelling too much. And... Uh, uh, it was it was kind of cringeworthy. I I just wasn't too enthusiastic about it. That um, that there were parts in the episode where he didn't really seem to be trying as hard, and maybe we can say this because um, because he tried too hard for a lot of it. But those parts where he didn't try that hard, they, those seemed to be the better parts of the episode. And then he he just tried to be a little too funny at the same time. Um, and you just have to be natural with it. Um, no, you don't have. You don't try to be funny when you're a comedian. So that's part of what I have to say about Chris Evans. Part of it with the forced audience reactions. I guess that could also tie a little bit into the Chris Evans. But like the, them telling the audience to give a round of applause and stuff after the star in the rally car does something like decent, I guess. That's too much. During the older episodes, they'll react however they felt, which was generally good anyway. To amp up the reactions, it just seemed too forced. Um, like, like for example, the beginning of the episode as well, when they said, welcome to the new Top Gear with the new improved crowd, and then suddenly, as if on cue, everyone gave a round of applause. It felt like... It felt like maybe the Jerry Springer show, where <laughs> it felt like the, some of those studio shows and Jerry Springer shows where they tell you the audience, "All right, when you get back, you have a nice round of applause," which it works in some cases, but in shows where where the audience can react a little more genuine that's when it could be a little better. And I just saw one of my friends go by. Um, that that's when they it's just too much to just have the audience just on cue be like woo yay or yeah so or or those times when it's like when they ask some the crowd something and instead of going like yeah like the crowd would used to in a more genuine fashion they're like woo yay come on now come on so I don't want to ramble on too much more about that, but um, basically, with between the two Chris Evans and crowd reactions, in a sense, it felt a little too forced. And basically, all they all they have to do, in a sense, is just be themselves. So you had two and a half stars go away due to Chris Evans, and the other two, another two and a half went away due to the force like crowd, in a sense. Um, now the other 0.5 goes away due to a bit of an identity crisis now and then other small things like for example the the Viper ACR versus the Corvette Z06 
um, I, I wasn't too thrilled with that because, um, like Sabine Schmitz, when it came to Sabine Schmitz, um, the, the problem was that when she was driving the Corvette, she didn't say much. She really didn't say much and it was like, w what does she have to say about the car? How does she feel about it? And stuff like that, almost like how in motoring shows when you, when you have, um, I'm not even just gonna talk about the previous Top Gear, but even other shows, like when you had hosts in different cars, they'll talk about how they felt in it and stuff like that, even as they were going crazy. Um, like maybe I'll have to reference back to this, but fifth gear when they drove an E60 M5 against the Williams Formula One car. They could have improved in that sense. And then also, I guess it was them trying to figure out, um, they still have to figure out chemistry, stuff like that, which is to be expected. And then also, um, this is going to take some adjustment, but um, the new track where they put the celebrity in a the star in a rallycross car. And that's a little interesting. Personally, I'm more of the stick on the tarmac kind of guy. Um, the off-road the off-road sections I, I can see where it could possibly get interesting with the uh, stars especially with some of them probably not doing too well on it but I kind of liked seeing everyone on like that exact same playing field like for example the cars are all all driven by the stig on the same course then you have um when you had the Formula One drivers and racing drivers um, as the stars they would be put in the, um, they'd drive the same course. Um, I kind of liked having the celebrities in, on the same thing. So, I mean, granted, it's gonna take some getting, getting used to. Um, like they said, they were trying to figure out what exactly they should change and what should go away. Um, overall, with the entire show, I'll have to say, some people think that it's just going to be a total disaster. Some are just going to never watch it again. But what other people have said on the internet was that if you go back to like the second version of Top Gear with the trio and look at their first few episodes or so, um, I heard that there were some cringeworthy parts. I'm going to have to go back and watch that myself. But I guess you could kind of say the same thing is going on here. Of course, they're going to have to work out a bunch of chemistry issues and stuff like that and sort out the identity crisis, but um, I, I did expect slightly better. But at the same time, I was not expecting to give the first episode more than a 6 out of 10. So what do they need to fix? I think they just have to be themselves. Um, let the audience be themselves when they're reacting. Let let Chris Evans just be more of himself in a sense. Don't try so hard because when he tries hard, it's just and I just got to look there. When when he tried when he tried hard and tried to get the audience like woo woo little stuff like that, it was unnecessary. Um, granted, Top Gear has always had some scripting. Well, obviously, but. When they try too hard in certain places, that's when it kind of went downhill. Um, as for other bits, like Extra Gear, that was actually pretty good, except I wanted to hear more of Chris Harris reviewing. However, Chris Harris, he was also kind of funny in some places as well. Rory did a great job. Sabine, it was interesting learning about her, and she also did a good job as well, I feel, in the Extra Gear part. Um, they did a good job with the news um having another star in it in the extra gear i was a little questionable it i, I think that should stay more towards the main show for or, for example having the news in uh extra gear instead of top gear i don't mind that too much so i won't i won't complain about that in any way so with all of that matt leblanc i i can't forget about him his review of the Aerial Nomad, he was actually pretty good. He stayed more of himself. Actually, in all of the segments, he it was he did a pretty good job, in my opinion. 
So to sum it up, Chris Evans, don't try too hard. Be more of yourself in a sense. Like, don't be too hyper. Keep the keep some energy that can define you, but just don't just don't be too crazy about it. Um, to the studio, the set, by the way, is nice, but they don't they don't need to like force audience reactions and stuff like that. That's a little bit too much. Uh, Matt LeBlanc, a bit of work to do. But that's more of just everyone gets better with experience, because he was pretty good. Rory was pretty good. Sabine, wish we heard more of her when she was talking about the Z06. Um, Chris Harris, wish we had a bit of him when he was reviewing. I kind of wish also in the first episode they did a better job of overviewing all of the, um, all of the hosts. But otherwise, I'm going to stick with my 4.5 out of 10 review. But... Is the show doomed? Absolutely not. Um, do they have work to do? Absolutely. Will they have 10 out of 10 episodes? At some point they will. Will it be in the first season? Who knows? But will it be at some point? I believe so. That's all I have to say for the new Top Gear. I've also put an article on uh, Car Throttle explaining all of that. So, or my views and stuff. So, link for that will be down below. And thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram, YTEA40, stuff like that. And I will catch all of you later.